Hello, this is James Berger, and we're with back with Off the Press, uh, and we are here with Judge Corey Woodward, our guests today, and uh, Nicole Parra and Russ Johnson, our, uh, two, my two co-hosts and experts on political world of Bakersfield and above. So it, um, speaking of politics, since we do talk politics here, um, we were talking a, a bit ago that uh, this is your first real campaign for, uh, for Judge. Um, you were appointed by uh, uh, Governor Schwarzenegger in 07, I believe. Uh, it's the first time you've, you've run for office. What, uh, how has this campaign gone for you so far? And what, what has really been the challenge uh, in running this campaign? Well, there's a lot. You have to learn a lot uh, about uh, campaigning. And uh, I think one of the most difficult things, just from a practical standpoint, is I live in Tehachapi, and uh, you end up having a, a countywide uh, campaign. And so, so far, when you're traveling to so many places, you know, the car suddenly, mm -hmm. the insurance company's calling up and saying, hey, how, all of a sudden you have a lot more miles here, mm -hmm. so we're going to have to adjust your insurance rate, but you're going all over the place uh, uh, to, to meet people. But, but it has, you know, that's been exciting, but it just ends up, if you're trying to do it when you have the working day and you're taking half of the day off, it, it ends up just, that, that's, I think, just a, a physical difficulty. Uh, and then there's other things that... Uh, you know, just learning about campaigning in and of itself, all the paperwork that has to be filed, the, the reports that have to be filed on time, um, and, and making sure that you're not making those kind of mistakes. Uh, uh, I think that's been a, a very difficult uh, a part of it. So in the primary, there was three of you. Um, now it's a head-to-head -head matchup, you and uh, your opponent. What are you going to do moving forward um, to create that contrast between you and your opponent? Because to me, oftentimes political campaigns are a choice. It's between one candidate or another. Judges' races are very different, right? Because it's not about issues per se often. It's usually about um, who do you think is more qualified. But how are you going to contrast yourself and your opponent? Well, I think the, the, the contrast, and it's been the focus of my campaign uh, since the beginning, and that is uh, it, it's really an issue of experience. And um, uh, I have been serving Kern County now for 29 years. I'm in the 30th year where I've been s serving the public either as a public prosecutor or as a commissioner and judge for the last 13 years. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of knowledge. That's a lot of institutional knowledge. My opponent, um, I think she's two years over the 10-year minimum uh, uh, qualification to, to run. The, her record isn't uh, uh, substantial in, in, in terms of the accomplishments uh, that she's had or where her position might be in, in the uh, district attorney's office. So to me, that, that's the critical point. It is, uh, I don't think, uh, I remember in some of the earlier campaigns, it wasn't Miss Bowles, but it was uh, Mr. Ravella says, look, the two of us, none of, uh, nobody stand, can stand up here and claim that we have the experience uh, Judge Woodward has. Uh, he, he has it. And I have the uh, significant endorsements from the judges and the legal community and the police. There's a lot of people that have known me for a very, very long time. And I remember a, a judge that, uh, and I'll point this out if I can in whatever situation I can. I remember a judge told me that he was appointed commissioner when he was 34 years old. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, at the time, I thought I was ready for it. And he said, but... Now, in retrospect, and he's been on the bench forever now, he says, in retrospect, I didn't have the background for it. I didn't have the life experience for it. There are significant uh, the issues that, that uh, come forward. And it's not, just, uh, um, uh, it's not just the background, but it is the, the, the life experience that people have that, that make a difference as a judge. And uh, I think, to me, that's, that's all there is. You know, I've met Miss Bowles, and she's a nice person, and uh, I'm sure that she'll be a, could be a very good judge in time. But it would take a lot of time for her to get uh, to the point where I already am, and the and the service that I've provided to the county um, um, has been significant. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, uh, one of the reasons she's running perhaps is, um, well, she wants to be a judge, um, but some of the issues you've had um, you know, at, in your personal life or with your reprimand with, with right. the bar, um, right. 
just to put that out there, do you think that's a reason why you know a young woman is running against you uh, for your election? I mean, your thoughts. Yeah, I don't know if it's so much uh, why a young woman would be right. running for me, but there's no doubt that uh, you know most judges, most judges in Kern County don't have to withstand an election, mm -hmm. and it was that uh, that censure that that created the opportunity. It gave her a talking point. What is the talking point of my my opponent? Nobody's going to be able to say she has a lot of experience. Nobody's going to be able to say the police chiefs, most of the police chiefs of the county support her. Nobody's going to say uh, what a fantastic candidate because of the work experience that she has qualifies her. Mm -hmm. it's one, it's the only uh, issue in this case is you have the judge who had the public reprimand mm -hmm. and or you have an attorney with little experience. Mm -hmm. That's the choice that people have. And it's either the judge, he's an experienced judge, mm -hmm. But because of what he did, then we'll put anybody in. Mm -hmm. I think that's the issue uh, in the campaign. Yeah. So Go ahead. Uh, that, that poses a question, and that is is that, uh, and, you, and Nicole brought it out and you touched on it, that the reprimand is, is an issue. How are you going to deal with that? Because the voters, you know, if, if they're hearing messages back and forth and her messages, oh, he was reprimanded, it's time for new blood, and your message is experience, you're going to have to deal with that issue. So, what are your, how are you dealing with that? Okay. Well, there's uh, uh, two ways that that you deal with it, and and one is is that uh, there is uh, um, there was no excuse for for what happened. It was wrong behavior, and um, eventually, with the decision they had to make a decision. The the commission on judicial performance. Do we remove this person? And what nobody ever points out, I've seen in whether it's the articles or anything else, and that is at the very conclusion is, uh, this man has been honest and forthright in the investigation. He's fully cooperated. He has a reputation of, of, uh, of uh, long service, capable, uh, being a capable judge, uh, promise serving the county for a long period of time. They, the commission felt this isn't something that uh, this person is going to ever repeat. It's not going to be an issue in his life again. And he has uh, expressed great remorse and great contrition. And so I, I, I point that out um, as much as I possibly can. Um, I, I keep hearing the issues of, well, you don't have any integrity if a man does so or if a person does something like this. You shouldn't. You shouldn't have any kind of a life. You should be. You should be cast out away from public life. And I don't agree with that. I don't know how many people agree with that. For the longest time, we have had this idea that well, you're a public figure. You have to be. You have to be superhuman. There's no such thing as a superhuman. And what I did was was wrong. I've paid greatly for it. I've. I'm. You know, the whole election uh, is has been paying for it. Um, and I had I had to think at the time when it was coming up when she indicated she was going to run against me. Do I want to go through this? Uh, because I know it was all going to be brought up again. You know, I've uh, um, through Christ forgiven me, my family has forgiven me, and and prior up to that time in January, life was back. Uh, you know, there was there was hope for for the future. Just as again, Christ promises us when we forgive, when we uh, confess and forgive and. And I've and I've changed, of course, as a person. I'm a better judge. I am more compassionate when those people come in into me into the courtroom. I've been through it. I don't know how many times family law attorneys have told me. One of the first questions my client asks is, "Has the judge been through a divorce?" They want to know, and it has made me uh, not just more compassionate, but more uh, understanding of the situations. Whereas. Uh, maybe a, a husband is really mad, throws a ashtray through the house window, and that's being used against him in a child custody. I at least have some, uh, you know, a better understanding of the emotions and 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 uh, that would lead him to do something like that. And I have, I think, a better understanding of of just the um, the trauma that their life I is in, and uh, and that's that's how I'm how I'm dealing with it. I think uh, there was somebody that. I read once, I, you know, you read as many things as you can to get through what I was getting through. And it said the, the measure of a man uh, like a tree is best measured when felled. And I started thinking, you know, okay, yeah, I've fallen. And now what do you do? 
You get back up. I was at work the very next day in the middle of a jury when that front page, the Californian's front page <laughs> article came that out. Wrote, that I wrote. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I, I just wish there was bigger news in the, <laughs> the world on that day. Right. But uh, I remember the very next day I was in there picking that jury, and if you don't think that was hard to go in there, I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. And uh, and there happened to be a person who who'd known the family for a period of time who was one of the potential jurors, and she asked to be seen in private, and she says, I read today's paper. She says, I can't, I can't sit here. He says, I don't have any confidence in anything that you would do in this trial. And that was the very first day afterwards, and it's, it, it's, been, it's been tough. Uh, it's been tough, but guess what? I put myself in that position, but I think, again, part of my measure is uh, uh, I, I've walked it. I've mm -hmm. accepted the consequences. It's, they've been great, and... Um, if I had it all to do over again, I wouldn't go through it, but I am a better man than I was before. So this, this election really is about that last thing. Your, your, your faith is, for your, your God has forgiven you, your wife has forgiven you, your family has forgiven you. Now you've got to ask the voters Correct. if they are willing to forgive you as well. Correct. Um, and so one of the things that I think uh, I remember from the story, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here because uh, it has been a while for me, um, and I'm not in intimately involved, but there was there was a period of time where there was a question of whether you were being fully open about the problem, and resi there was some resistance, I think, to right. disciplinary stuff. Right. Which, what, can you tell us about what changed, what point you kind of figure out? Okay, this is not the correct, you know, way to do it. I need to come completely clean and be, as you said, in the end, contrite and open and willing to uh, move forward honestly. Right. You know, I was engaged in, uh, in, in behavior that people want to keep private. And uh, I knew all along, uh, I mean, I was trying to keep something hidden. And, but I always, I, I always knew that there would come a point where um, that, it, that it would get to where you, I, if it if it couldn't be, if it didn't disappear, that it was going to be open, and and I always knew that there would be that day when I would have to do it. I mean, I kept, you know, what do you do? You keep your fingers crossed that 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 isn't going to come forward, but 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 it did, and and it had to do part of the you know, in in the uh, the disciplinary action is, you know, they never said that Judge Woodward ever lied about it. Judge Woodward did not disclose it, is what they're saying. He was misleading, and the misleading was because I didn't disclose it. And that is, uh, to me, that's a significant difference than, than lying about it and, and trying to cover up. Um, no, certainly I should have disclosed it in early time. It was terrible. It was terrible. But um, uh, I, I guess... Uh, as soon as it became apparent that m people were, were getting involved, I can't pick out maybe a, a certain time other than it was getting to the point where we were going to have to make a bigger deal uh, uh, about whether the clerk stayed with me or not, where I said, uh, Judge, we're not defending this anymore. And uh, I disclosed it to him, and then we disclosed it uh, to the presiding, and it, and it went forward. So you've been going out, and you've been campaigning now. And as you're going through that, you know, stage like James said that you're asking the voters for forgiveness. You've had to ask people for not only their vote, but in some cases endorsements or support. What are they saying to you as you're doing that? They want they want to hear the they want to hear my the story. Uh, they, I think everybody that I've asked an endorsement for, you know, they, they they've been aware of it. And uh, you know, I, I will. A lot of them say, "Hey, look." Some of them will look at it as that was a private matter that uh, that isn't uncommon, and we don't need to talk about that too much. But of course, I would always indicate to them that that um, you know I was wrong and I, and I don't defend it in any fashion. And then uh, there have been others that have, that that they simply. You know what you did uh, was wrong. I can't. I can't give you my support. Um, they say, "Look, we've known you a long time. We know you were a straight arrow before, and we expect you'll be a straight arrow afterwards." It was totally out of your character, 
but I can't support you uh, in, in a public fashion. Um, so um, uh, if I can, I, I think a lot, of, uh, most of the concern was what, how have you changed since then? And I think everyone that I, w I would explain kind of what I've been explaining today about the differences that, you know, right afterwards, I mean, I was so down um, and I was trying to figure out, you know, what to do. And I started um, just participating in the homeless ministry, a, a food ministry up in Tehachapi. And that, that uh, has been an eye opener too, because you realize there are a lot of people in this world that are some that are in very bad circumstances. Corey, you're you're shamed. Everybody's looking at you, and and you feel like crawling in a hole. And I see these people who that that's been that's been their life where they've felt a different type of shame, and maybe the public's not looking at that kind of shame. But it's but but people have been through it, and I think a lot of people uh, in talking with them have said, hey, um, you know what. I think everybody says we've all done something mm -hmm. wrong. You know, we've all fallen short mm -hmm. of the glory of God. And um, some people have said this makes you more human, and I always took that uh, th that helped build me up some. And um, but uh, uh, that seems to be the, the the to me the critical part is what have you done since that time? Or you just say yeah I did wrong and you went about business as usual? But no, I'm in a mar marriage ministry and you cannot believe the numbers of people in this world whose marriages are struggling. And so here's this experience. You think it's as bad and negative? Uh, well, absolutely it is on a personal level. But this has given me a, uh, this has given me knowledge, uh, understanding, and emotion that we're, we've been able to help a lot of people uh, in, in the ministry. And so when, uh, I think when I explained those type of things, the, the endorsements, uh, they said, look, you know, we kn we've known you forever. You've been a great DA, you've been a great judge, and, and you can use our name. Mm -hmm. And you do have an impressive list of lawyers and judges and law enforcement folks behind you. and. Um, uh, it's, you know, telling us, uh, you know, your, your story and your feelings. Sometimes it's frustrating as a candidate because you wish you had the time to talk to everyone about that, right. um, to be able to, to personalize it versus, you know, just having some, your opponents maybe, you know, s you know, whisper campaign about it. And so, right. but I think you can look at yourself and your family in the eye and say, you know what, I came clean, I'm running. If I win, that's terrific. I can t continue to serve in the legal field. And if I lose, I will can continue to serve where the Lord wants me to be. And I think that because you didn't run from it or hide from it, I think that speaks loudly, especially as an elected official. You didn't run. Yes, it took you a little longer to disclose, but you're willing, which a lot of elected officials, a lot of us have things in our past that we don't want it publicly exposed, and people right. find it <laughs> usually, um, but it's how you handle it afterwards, how you're able to look people in the eye, especially your family and your wife. Right. Um, the rest of it is let them decide, right? right. And uh, it's about time to wrap up, but uh, on that point, Nicole, I mean, I, I've mm -hmm. covered politics and uh, government here for 20 years, and and uh, the lie is always more damaging mm -hmm. than the act, yeah. uh, right. in my experience, and, and the public really cannot forgive that. So it'll be interesting to hear uh, what the voters have to say in November. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for coming on and being mm -hmm. uh, frank with us and mm -hmm. talking with us for such a long time. And uh, this is Off the Press. Our guest was Corey Woodward, judge. Thank you for your time. We'll see you again next week. <laughs>